Hi friends, welcome to the Earth Our Habitat Geography Class 6 Major Landforms of the Earth. In this module, we will be discussing about the formation of major landforms, how they are developed, what are the forces involved in the formation of these landforms. So, we will be discussing this chapter under the following headings introduction land sculpturing processes mountains landforms and people so in detail we'll be discussing these topics you know that and in fact, you must have seen some of the landform features. You will notice that the surface of the earth is not the same everywhere. The earth has an infinite variety of landforms. Some parts of the lithosphere may be rugged and some flat. So the appearance of the earth is constantly changing. The earth today is not quite the same as it was yesterday. The change in the earth's surface is a continuous process. Yet most changes occur slowly as to be unnoticeable in the course of hundreds of generations of mankind. The earth's surface is not smooth, it is uneven. The unevenness is caused by various landforms. A landform may be defined as distinctive feature of the earth's surface in a given area. Landforms vary in size and shape from place to place. Further, each landform is changing all the time, giving rise to a variety of minor landforms. Look at the picture carefully. You must have seen some of the land features as shown in this figure. The mountains, volcano, lakes, harbor, islands. These are some very common features which you might have come across. Have you ever thought how these beautiful landscapes or landforms have been doubled. The formation of landforms is a continuous process. Although it takes millions of years to change particular landform. Look at this image, which will help you to identify some very common landforms, the mountains, volcano, valley areas, the plain, which are very fertile for agriculture, canyons, the great canyons you must have heard about, islands, we talk about India, the two island in our country, the Luxdeep Island and then the Manic Wilds. Rivers, oceans, lakes in fact, the Nanita Lake really deep. The hills, waterfall, bay, 
plateau, cave, peninsula, glaciers. So these are some of the major landforms. Look at this picture again. The beautiful mountains, the plain areas, the canyons, the valley areas which are very fertile. So have you ever thought how these mountains, plains, all these areas have developed? Being a student of social science or geography, you must know how the formation of these landforms have taken place. So we will be discussing in detail about the formation of these landscapes. The forces which shape the landscapes can be known as land sculpturing processes. We will discuss them under the processes of land sculpture. This is how the different land forms have developed. What are the processes involved in this? Look at this image carefully. And try to think that how this beautiful landscape has developed. The rivers, the rocks, you can see, and it is the work of Rivo which has developed this landscape. Continuous process of the Rivo, and it must have taken millions of years to save this landscape. And it is a work of river, the three processes of river are erosion, transportation and deposition which results in the formation of these beautiful landscapes. So the natural processes that have changed or sub feature are of two types, the internal process and the external processes. So we will be discussing in detail about the internal process and the external processes which have changed the earth features, which have modified the landscapes. So these land sculpturing processes, first we will discuss about the internal process. The internal process occur in the interior of the earth. They include earth's movement, volcanic eruptions and earthquake. They lead to the fracture, bend and wrap of the earth's crust, producing elevations and depressions. Look at this image carefully. You can see some of the internal forces or processes you can call it, which bring changes on the land surface. This can be your uh, volcanoes, the earthquake, and here in this picture you can see the plate movement results in the formation of mountains. So these all processes have resulted in the formation of various landscape and the very important thing to note is that the internal forces which act from inside of the earth surface are rapid. They bring sudden changes for the landscape and modifies them.
So the internal processes include movement of the tectonic plates. Look at the image carefully. Volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. The internal processes may be abrupt or sudden as well as slow. The slow movements build mountains and continents. Look at this picture. The internal process occur in the interior of the earth. They include earth's movement, volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. The sudden movement produces volcanic eruptions and earthquake. So remember, the slow movement builds mountains and continents, whereas the sudden movement builds, produces volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. The vertical up and down movements within the earth crust cause faulting of the crustal rocks and produce features like plateaus, block mountains, basins, rift valley and some types of scarpments. The literal sideways movement causes folding in the crystal rocks and produces features such as pole mountains. Volcanic eruptions produce lava plains and plateaus. Volcanic cones, geysers, hot springs and mud pools. These occur on the earth's surface. Internally, the features produced are dikes, sills, batholiths and decoids. So this was about the internal processes. All these are the agents of gradations. So as you know the earth's surface consists of variety of landforms such as mountains, plateaus, plains and valleys. These landforms are created out of the material of the earth crust by certain natural processes. These natural processes that change the earth's physical appearances are of two types. We are discussing that the internal process we have discussed already i hope you must have now understood about the internal process now let us discuss about the external process the external process work on the surface of the land in contact with the atmosphere and hydrosphere They involve two complementary activities, wearing down highlands and raising lowlands so as to bring both to a common level. For this reason, they are called the gradation process. So among the external processes, denudation and deposition are very important. In this process, denudation, especially because of weathering, soil is formed. Due to erosion, valleys, cliffs, rivers, etc. are formed. And due to deposition, flood plains, deltas, lakes, plains, etc. are formed. The main agent of gradation processes are the sun rain, wind, rivers, glaciers and ocean waves. So once again, the external process which take place on the surface of the earth include the action of agents like weather, rivers, glaciers, wind, waves and underground water. Look at this picture carefully. You will notice that 
all these landforms have been saved, have been formed or developed by the processes which are known as gradation processes and which are the result of the external force processes. And the external processes work slowly. So they change the landscape very slowly. It might take millions of years to change the landforms into a different type of feature. So the external processes work slowly. Look at the river flowing. The continuous flow of river develops the valley areas and the continuous movement of the winds in the desert area or in arid or dry area may result in the formation of these types of rock features. Same as here. So it takes a long time to change the landforms by the external processes. They wear down the areas of far elevations and deposit material in the lowlands. So after erosion, transportation and deposition, wear down and deposit in the lower areas. So the external forces which work very slowly and bring about changes on the earth surface are your running water, wind, the action of sea waves the movement of the winds which continually continuously strikes the rocks and develops a typical feature which is known as the mushroom rock especially found in the arid areas or in deserts look at this picture the main agent of gradation process as, as we discussed are sun rain wind, rivers, glaciers and ocean waves. All these have developed the different types of landforms. The work of snow or ice or glaciers on the mountains develops different types of landforms. Whereas the sea waves also develops a particular type of landforms. So the sun, rain and wind elements of weather cause the decay of exposed rocks. This is known as weathering. Rivers, glaciers and wind not only wear down rocks but also lose rock material over vast, vast distances. This is known as erosion. The transported rock material is deposited in lowlands or the sea floors. So here you should know the difference between weathering and erosion. So weathering is decaying of the exposed rocks and erosion is removal of the top layer of the soil. So once again the wearing of a breakdown of rocks by agents present in the atmosphere can be like temperature changes 
moisture and frost is known as weather. So look at the image carefully. This is for example of weather. How the agents break down a wearing of a way of the rocks takes place. It can be sunlight, rain, frost, temperature changes, etc. Thus, wearing is the decay or disintegration of rocks on the surface of the earth due to exposure to the atmosphere. So I hope you have understood what is weather. Now let us discuss about erosion. As I said, erosion is the wearing away of rocks by agents on the surface of the earth, like running water, moving ice, wind and waves. So running water every year the floods uh, take away the important the fertile valuable land and this is a good example of erosion look at this picture this is the result of the river water developed, how these canyons are developed, how these structures have been eroded. Sometimes erosion is also known as denudations, meaning laying bare. It is the wearing away of rocks so that the underlying rocks are laid bare. So river, glaciers, wind and ocean waves therefore work in two folds, erosion and deposition. Due to these processes, the structure of the earth gives rise to major landforms. These are mountains, plateaus and plains. So gradation as I discussed is equal to erosion plus transportation and deposition. So three processes are in, involved in or change the landscape. Now let us discuss about the mountains. The different types of mountains and how they are formed. A mountain is a natural elevation of the earth's surface. A mountain may be narrow at top and broad at the base. The elevation of mountain is considerably more than that of surrounding area. We know that temperature reduces with increase in altitude, so that's why you feel cold for high altitude areas. And due to this, very high mountains are usually covered with snow. Look at the picture. The high mountain, the great Himalayas, they covered with snow. So what is a mountain? A portion land surface rising considerably above the surrounding country either as a single eminence or in range of chain is known as mountains.
There are some other land features which you can see. Glaciers, permanently frozen rivers of ice are called glaciers. Glaciers are found in some of the very high mountains. Try to recollect the name of the glaciers in our country, India. Population at mountains. Because of steep slopes, less amount of land is available for farming on mountains. This is also difficult to build houses on steep slopes. Hence, less number of people lives on the mountains. So that is why nowadays you see a lot of movement of people from the mountains to the plain areas in search of better facilities in search of jobs, in search of good education. So a lot of movement of people from the mountains to the plains takes place because of the tough life of the hills on the mountains. Mountain range, when mountains are arranged in a line, then it is called a mountain range. Some of the mountain systems contain ranges spread over hundreds of kilometers. So we will discuss more about mountains, importance of mountains at the end of the, this module. Now let us see the different types of mountains. There are three types of mountains. Whole mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains. So in the coming figure you will find uh, whole mountains. Look at the image carefully. Both the diagram. So what is fold mountain? How they are developed? When a tectonic plate gets pressure from two sides, it gets folded. Look at this picture. The landscape, the tectonic force from both the sides when pressure is applied. See what happens to the mountain, the land surface, the plain area. It changes into high elevated area which is known as the cold mountains. You can see the traces of the poles if you look the image carefully and this is the result of the plate movements, the tectonic movements. Some of its portions becomes elevated and forms the mountains. The depression from the valley so the depression areas, these areas, they form the valleys. The Himalayas, the Andes and the Alps are example of whole mountains. They are young mountains of the world and hence they have some of the highest peaks of the world. Taravli is also an example of whole mountain. Because of constant erosion, Taravli has considerably worn down. So, in India, Taravli mountain, due to the continuous erosion, the shape of the mountains have changed. So now let us discuss about the block mountains. When large areas are broken and displaced vertically, 
block mountains are formed. In this case, the uplifted blocks are called horse. On the other hand, the lower blocks are called gar, graber. Examples of block mountains are the Rhine Valley and the Versus Mountain in Europe. So try to understand when large areas are broken and displaced vertically, block mountains are formed. Look the image carefully. These form where one slab or rock is thrust above another. This is host, uplifted part, the middle part is grape. And these are the fault lines. Fault block mountains are formed when blocks of bedrock are split into two by tectonic activities. You can see an example over here of the block mountains. The uplifted parts in between you have the valley areas. You can take the example of this area also. So that is a good example of the block mountains. So all mountains are not formed by folding, which results from horizontal compressions of layers of the earth crust. Block mountains and rift valleys are formed by exactly the opposite effect. So opposite movement of plates takes place. They are formed when the surface of the earth is cracked apart by tectonic plates moving away. So they are the blood when tectonic plates as in this picture uh, two plates they move towards each other in the case of pole mountains and due to the force applied the middle part is uplifted and this elevated part is the mountains pole mountains you can call it as whereas in the case of the block mountains the opposite force is applied and the earth is cracked apart by tectonic plates moving up. So block mountains may be formed by or formed in two ways you can say. When two roughly parallel faults occur, the block of the earth between them may be raised forming a steep sided mountain. Another one is a block mountain may also be formed by the sinking of crust on either side of the two parallel faults. These are the two parallel faults. This means that a block mountain can be formed between two rift valleys. The Arabian Peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula, the Versus and the Black Forest are examples of block mountains formed in this field. We have discussed other examples of the Rhine Valley, the Versus Mountains in Europe. So block mountains may be formed in two ways. When two roughly parallel fault occur, the block of the earth between them may be raised forming a steep sided mountain. Another way, the block mountain may also be formed by the sinking of crust on either side of the two parallel faults. This means that a block mountain can be found between two rift valleys. The Arabian Peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula, the Moses and the Black Forest are example of block mountains formed in this way. And when two roughly parallel faults occur, the crests between long and parallel cracks or faults may sink 
forming narrow steep sided valleys the most well known rift valley <coughs> rift valley is the great rift valley of africa which stretches from mozambique in the south to the syria in the north a total length of about 6440 km The valley of the Rio Rhine between Vosges Mountain and the Black Forest is another example of a rift valley. And according to some geologists, the Narmada Valley between Vindhya and Satpura ranges in India occupies a rift valley. Let us now discuss about the volcanic mountain. A mountain formed due to volcanic activity is called volcanic mountain. Examples of volcanic mountains are Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Fujiyama. Look at the picture carefully. How the volcanic mountains are developed, full of snow. And this is the way how it, the mountain, um, volcanic mountains are developed. These form when magma and tectonic uplift push up surface rock layers causing the ground to bulge the magma slowly hardens into igneous rocks weathering and erosion wear away the surface exposing the dome formation so this is how the volcanic mountains are developed now let us discuss the importance of mountains mountains are rich sources of water many important rivers originate from glaciers on the mountains water from the mountains is used for irrigation and also for power generation rear valleys and terraces are ideal for cultivation mountains are rich in flora and fauna the plant species of a place is called flora the animal species of a place is called fauna remember Mountains provide many forest produce like wood, herbs, medicinal plants, honey, etc. Mountains are ideal tourist spots. Many adventure sports are only possible in mountains like river rafting, paragliding, hand gliding, ski, etc. so this was about the importance of the mountains so mountains cover about 26% of the earth surface but support only 1% of the world's population so isn't it interesting but mountains have a great bearing on human life and its activities these are useful for people in many ways mountains have a great impact on the climate of an area mountains modify the climate and act as a barrier like himalayas in between of tibet and india vegetation a large variety of vegetations like forests and grasses grow on the mountains which provide timber and pasture thick forest cover provides shelter to wildlife and you know that mountains are a storehouse of water all large rivers of the world have their source in the mountains 
Many rivers in the world have been harnessed to produce hydroelectricity. The river valleys and terraces are ideal for cultivation of crops. Mountains have a rich variety of flora and fauna as we have already discussed. And the climate of the mountain is good for health. Many people visit hills, stasis during the summer season and we have already discussed that mountains provide several sports like paragliding, hand gliding, river rafting and skiing. So now you have understood about the importance of the mountains. So next time when you travel to the mountains, try to conserve the mountains. Do not pollute the mountains. Respect your environment. Respect the mountains and enjoy it. So at last <coughs> you have understood about the different types of mountains, the importance of mountains. So here is a fun activity for you. Find out the different mountain ranges and different continents of the world. Find out the names of five countries with the highest number of volcanoes. It is just a mind boost support. Hope you must have understood. Thanks. Meet you in the next video.